without further ado, we have the athletic lead writer, uh, my man James Boyd. Welcome on to the show. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. Appreciate you, man. You reached out. Applause. It was funny because I'm like, man, this dude asking for an interview. I'm usually asking you for an interview, so that was dope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I figured I'd flip the script on you one time, see how it all yeah. work out. <laughs> no, for sure. I mean, listen, we, we've been sitting here talking about training camp, training camp preview. How would you like grade and view the Colts offseason going into training camp? I think it's – if I had to give it, like, an actual letter grade, I'd probably give it, like, a a C just because nothing really crazy happened. That's not disrespectful. I mean, it's just honest. Like, they didn't make any crazy moves. But I don't think you all regressed in some crazy way either. Um, I think the biggest offseason addition I've been saying this over and over again is that Anthony Richardson is healthy. Like, that was Fact. basically what they bet on. They bet on this dude being our franchise quarterback and him being all right. And then I would say as far as weaknesses and stuff, obviously I've been I've been saying it on Twitter. I've been saying it in my writing. I do think that there is some questions in the secondary when it comes to free safety, when it comes to cornerback. But at the same time, whenever I say these things, the reason why I feel like I can stand on it is because I always enjoy when the player gets to get the last lap anyways. Like, it's not like I'm saying this, like, I, I want you to go out there and fail. Like, if you're a Jalen Jones and – you're going to see your second year, or if you're Nick Cross and you're going to see your third year, like, I'm just saying, hey, this is what I've seen so far. And if you prove me wrong, I will stand right in front of you after every practice, after every game, and say, hey, I was wrong, or I got to own this. But um, those are the areas where I'm like, man, I don't know. But at the same time, like I said, um, you know, I'm not out there playing. So I think you try to be, like, critical or look at things with a critical eye, but at the same time, like, not get too crazy because – you know, you got to go out there and play at the end of the day. Like, there's a bunch of teams that have made a bunch of moves. Um, I even remember, like, the Michael Vick Philly days, you know, another Eagles yes. Philly reference. Yes, like, yes, Everyone thought they was going to win everything, and it just didn't work out like that. So, you got to give it time. No, nah, 100%. And I think that's a little where, like, my life and, you know, growing up in Philly, um, obviously for, you know, the indie fans who may not remember or whatever, but I remember when we got Namdi Asamoah, we got Mike Vick, we got – Vince Young, uh, obviously, uh, Shady was coming back. We ended up getting Steven. another receiver. Yeah. I mean, another running back. Uh, yeah. I couldn't remember who it was. It was just like our team was stacked. Every big time free agent came to Philly that year. Uh, Vince Young came out and said, Bro, this is a dream team. We got a Super Bowl mm-hmm. team. And we were trash. <laughs> and I even think, I, I, I literally look back to the 22, uh, 22 team now. I think it was a lot of different factors that played a, a part in this. Uh, but I would say that was the off season where I felt like um, we made the most impactful moves. Not to say that they all didn't turn out, but you know when we signed Matt Ryan, when we got uh, uh, Stephon Gilmore, uh, Rodney McLeod, uh, Yannick uh, uh, Ngagwe, like those were big time moves. Yannick was the best pass rusher in free agency that year. Gilly is a former defensive player of the year, still playing at an extremely high level. Rodney McLeod, Super Bowl champion. Matt Ryan, uh, former MVP. Like these are major people to add to a team um, in 21 that was uh, what, you know, uh, a, a game away from winning division and all the other stuff. So that was like, mm-hmm. all right, big upgrades. And it ended up all falling apart. So I definitely agree with you in the terms of, like, um, sometimes the offseason narrative is a little overrated. Um, now, I, I'm going to jump into it, too. Training camp, uh, we going into it uh, from the fan perspective. And I'm, I'm, at, I'm at from the writer perspective. And I'm going to speak on this as a former guy that used to be on the team. Now, like, I, like, I used to need, you know what I mean? Go ahead, bro, go ahead throw uh, Zaire Franklin that position <laughs> battle, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, look, look. No, nah, bro, it's a, a look, 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 it's a position battle for the third linebacker. You just gonna give it to uh, EJ, like <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying. So, what are some position battles that on our team that uh, you know you think from the fans and from the media perspective that you guys are looking forward to um, seeing play out through, throughout training camp? I think the biggest one among fans and media has to be Ad Mitchell and Alec Pierce. Like, who's gonna be that third starting receiver? Who's gonna be that top deep threat on the team? Um, and so that's a question I asked Alec throughout the spring. Like, hey, man, they drafted another receiver who does some of the things that you do. Obviously, they're different players, different people, but at the same time, that is something that you can't not notice. So, like, it's like if they go out and sign a starting linebacker and you're in a linebacker room and you're looking around like, wait, am I doing my job right? Am I good enough? And so I think that there is some pressure there for Alec Pierce to produce. And obviously, A.D. Mitchell is coming in as a rookie. He has a lot to learn, but he's shown some things throughout the spring. So that's one 
Position battle, I think free safety is another one with Nick Cross and Rodney Thomas, both going into their third year. Both have had moments, and you're just looking like, okay, who's going to take that reign? And, and Ron Miles told us that. I talked to him one-on-one -on -one throughout the spring, and he was like, yeah, we need somebody to step up and be that guy. And then the last mm -hmm. one I'll say will probably be cornerback. You know, outside of Kenny Moore, I looked it up the other day. It's crazy because Kenny doesn't seem like it, but he really is the OG in that room. Like, there is – Oh, for sure, 100% I mean, on the team, honestly, on the I'm defense. Saying, like, like, he yeah. started more games than that entire room combined. Like outside yeah. of him. Hmm. So that's crazy to say in my mind. I'm like, dang, like he really does have all of the knowledge. So they have to go to him and obviously learn from him. But beyond that, you got question marks with Juju. Obviously, I think you would expect him in the second round pick to be a guy. But at the same time, at this point, where you pick don't even matter. It's like you on a team, you got to prove yourself. And so hmm. I think outside of Kenny, there's a lot to prove on that secondary as well. So between Dallas, Jalen Jones, and a few others, it's like who's going to, you know, earn that starting job. So I'm excited for it. I think sometimes, too, though, like, you know, that first day of camp, you could say, oh, so-and-so had a good day, and everybody eats it up and, you know, goes crazy about it. And then it's like two week, two days later, somebody else has a big day. So you never really know until you get mm. to actual football. But at the same time, you got to feed the beast is what I call it. Like, you got to hype the fans up. You got to, sure. um, you know, make something, you know, out of nothing in, in some cases. So um, it should be fun. And I guess the last one would be um, tight end just because they still don't have that true number one tight end, but they got a lot of guys in the room that can do a lot of big things. And then obviously Jelani Woods coming back, um, super athletic, freak, you know, athletic dude. But obviously he's mm -hmm. got to prove it, you know, and stay healthy. Yeah, no, nah, no Fun. question. First of all, James said something that was very important, bro. I ain't going to lie. Look, training camp, and I done been there, bro. I be trying to tell y'all, like, when you, it is a marathon, bro. It is, I done seen plenty of guys. Like, that's why I don't get too hyped up about, like, the, the, the practice clips. First of all, I'm I'm almost, like, vehemently against, like, practice clips. But it's just, like, uh, you know, especially in the spring. Because, like, I'm a I'm a example. I remember my second year, uh, you know, I had a, a great spring. I remember pulling up to OTAs in super shape, like, ready, cooking, dogging. But I ain't had that great of a training camp. You know what I mean? Okay. Now, like I say, a lot of things went into that. But And because of that, the narrative shifts. And the depth chart shifts with that. You know what I mean? So, like, I think that's a great point that he brings up that, you know, sometimes, you know, day one is, oh, my God, AD caught the bomb. He the one rookie of the year is up. And then, you know what I mean? Look, you got. I tell him all the time, you got to keep going. Like, you got you yeah. to show up at practice every day. Nick Cross, oh, my God, pick six it of an AR. And he hurdled him. Uh, that's enough. Like every play in practice is not theoretically like treated equal. You know what I mean? Because like respectfully, if you picking off uh you know the fourth string Q, like yeah, you got two picks, but yeah, when we put you with the ones, man, where you go? You know, so it's sure. like it's a little different sometimes. Yeah, you got a fumble, but you ain't forced that, John. He just dropped <laughs> it. That, you know what I mean? That that John ain't count. But I also think. It's important for people to realize, too, like, you could win training camp. Like, there's different phases in training camp that I think people never understood. And it was something that I always locked in on when it came time to, like, making and earning my spot on the team, right? Mm -hmm. You got training camp, which starts Wednesday, really Thursday, first practice, right, where you're competing against your team. The most important person for you to beat is your teammate, right? Right. Then you got preseason. Preseason. You putting it on tape. Preseason, in my opinion, even though we stand here firmly – that preseason does not matter. Preseason, We've said that we when we stand by matter. that. However, as a guy trying to earn a roster, that's your chance to show in a game set. Some guys are gamers. Some everybody's not a great practice player. Sure. So that's your chance to show the rest of the league how you play in a game setting. Um, and also too, bro, I think uh, I think the biggest uh, mover and shaker days are the joint practices, bro. I truly mm -hmm. believe it. I've always felt that way. I still believe that today. If you're a guy trying to make a roster the biggest gains you can make is joint practice because it's like the mixture of a game and a practice. Like now mm -hmm. you only really, I didn't seen guys make the other team based off of joint practice. Yeah. And I think uh, it's a, that's a big deal um, just in terms of, but I, I ain't gonna lie, James. I love where we at, man. I know you talked about a couple of different position battles we got going on. Uh, I think that makes everybody better. I think all those boys is going to be better. I definitely uh, got love for our young secondary, man. I know they get a lot of hate. It's been a lot of pressure putting on them boys. 
Um, and I was watching 22 the other day, man. My man Rod T really had a hell of a rookie year, man. Uh, he definitely he definitely has got it in him. Uh, seventh round guy. You know we rocking with him. Obviously, Nick's got all the talent too. Uh, so, you know, that's definitely there. And then I think all the corners. I ain't going to hold you. I love our cornerback room. Just a bunch of young, hungry dogs. You know what I mean? From K-Mo, Dalo, JJ, Juju. Uh, you know, all those young boys, man, when they get out there, they hungry and they ready to prove themselves. I feel like corner is the best place to have a hungry dog, bro. Mm-hmm. Because I really don't feel like in the most time now, it's obviously great to have a big time name corner. But I think when you got somebody that's young, that's hungry, that's willing to compete and prove themselves, that goes a long way, bro. Yeah. That goes a long way. So yeah. um, definitely appreciate that, man. Hey, look, sure. man, before we let you go, man, I mean, what uh what 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 what's what's the vibe going around the league, man? Like what what's 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 some stuff that you seeing around the league? I know they got the uh the uh uh hard knocks off season. You been watching that? I really don't like it. I try to make sure that I be present in the off season, man. Like I went home for a couple of weeks to Illinois, see my mom, see my sister, my dad. I try mm. to get away from it because, you know, as athletes, y'all know more than me. But still mm. being in it, um, you miss a lot. So you miss a lot of holidays, birthdays, stuff like that. So I've been unplugged from it, but around the league, I mean I think the biggest thing I'm seeing is that the Xavier Worthy uh, deep ball from Patrick Mahomes. Like I've seen that probably a hundred times in my time. Oh my mind. gosh! You know, everybody like, man, here they go again. So <laughs> in my mind, I'm like, I'm watching a dude. You know, respect to Patrick Mahomes. The last time y'all played him, y'all got him. But he is one of the best I've ever seen in his position. I'm like, dang. Light, like, light skin Jesus, huh? I That's mean, just who he is. Just flawless. Walk man, on water, turn water to day, wine. Man, like him and Steph Curry are like. They they so similar to me because they're annoyingly good. Like I feel like I would be annoyed playing them because you can play perfect defense, had a perfect play call, and like they'll just do something and you like maybe God just made you a little better on that play. Like I got you. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, playing playing Patrick is definitely one of those. All right, look, if you gonna roll out right, throw the ball all the way left, seventy five yards on the money, and hit this receiver and strike. If you gonna do that all day, then that's just what today's got to be. But you gonna have to do that all day. That's pretty much how you gotta look at that. Exactly. Sure. So I'm looking at that. Sure. I'm looking at Lamar Jackson. I think Lamar, um, he's in that period where he's past the honeymoon stage and everybody love him. So now it's like, oh, you don't win. You don't win a big game. And I'm like, do y'all realize how hard it is to win in this league? And then also, do y'all realize how much of a dog he is? Like, I mean, you can't roll out of bed and be a two-time MVP and the people saying you ain't a winner. Like, I'm like, dude, he wins. It's just, it's hard to win, you know, at the highest level. And then you got to consider he's going up against, like I just said, one of the dudes that's, you know, in the best, you know, of all time already. So um, it's, it's certain narratives that I look at, and I'm like, man, I don't know if I always agree with all of these, um, you know, hot takes. But at the same time, I mean, that's why you play the game. And so as much as I love the offseason, I enjoy it. I mean, I'm just like y'all in a sense where I enjoy um, results because results mean you got to stand on something. And if you mm-hmm. play good or you play bad, and that's one thing I respect about you and a couple other guys, EJ as well, like, Win, lose, or draw. Like, literally win, lose, or draw. I remember the first game I ever covered was a tie in Houston and EJ. Oh, my straight, God. straight, man. I remember asking oh everybody God. how I felt, and EJ was like, oh, oh my God. A real answer about it. So, um, yeah, you got to respect <laughs> that when y'all stand on business and actually, you know, answer questions after every game. But, yeah, crazy start to my career. I don't want no ties this year, Zaire. I need wins, you know. Wins and losses, something, something I can write about. Ties is weird, man. I would I would rather lose by a billion than <laughs> than, than to tie, bro. Bro, it's the most awkward uh thing of all time, bro. It's like yeah. you y'all do the handshake afterwards, and it's like I'm telling you, like when the, the post game handshake is gonna let you know how everything went. But neither team really like, damn, do I do I pop my shit? Like, do I talk crazy? Like. We tied. Like, and that Damn means y'all went to home. overtime. Y'all went through all of this yeah. just to tie. Like, I actually Bro, hate the whole week one thing. I remember asking those questions and thinking I was trolling. I'm like, this is like a troll question. Like, how does Bro. it feel to not win or not lose? Like, that's what I'm what saying. Kind of let me. <laughs> let me let me ask you this. Uh, you know, obviously, it's. Uh, I think he might be. I don't even. I don't think Patrick Mahomes has reached the stage of greatness where people hate him unnecessarily anymore. Like any unnecessarily yet? I don't think. I think he's still very much universally loved. No, yeah, I think he's universally. He's loved. extremely universally loved. He's very well liked by by players. By it's like we're all still in the the golf clap of approval of all the great things he does. Really? I I pers- Well, I'm not gonna say me personally, but uh, I don't, everybody, I don't, everybody, I don't, everybody. I don't think in, that. At least in the media space, I do think that he gets a ton of praise and rightfully so. But at the same time, yeah, rightfully so. I look at it like this. If you're a competitor, 
I like if you're a hater and you're a competitor. Like, as long as you're out there playing the game. Like, ain't nothing wrong with being a hater, being petty. Like, my man, I think James, that adds to the, my the man, And James, it's funny when on. you see some of the narratives that come out from different people. Like, oh, why do they not like this person? Or how come they can't get them that respect? And it's like... Yeah, but at another time, like we can do that in the off season. We can do that. My like, man, like, my man but, James oh. trying to get his own segment on the John, bro. First of all, <laughs> he bigging up the Sixers and supporting the hate. Man. Thank <laughs> God, bro. But in 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 the light of Patrick Mahomes, like not being like, if it makes sense, not hated on. Like, do I think that people like? Patrick Mahomes as a person, guess but he gets hated on for him being successful as a football player. He doesn't get hated yeah, on being successful the same. Yes, way. he does. Yeah, I think the there's same a way good, that Lamar like, Jackson does. That that's, that's 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 what I, that's what I'm trying to explain the difference. There's a like I think Patrick gets hate because people hate. Like there's everybody. There's just haters out there. There's a flock right. of people who going just yeah. dislike everything you do, right? Yeah. But I think the way that the narratives are shifted, I think he's so universally loved, appreciated, and supported in the opposite way almost as Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson was the like what the one of the only unanimous MVPs. He's also he just got two MVPs. I mean, he just went to the conference championship uh you know and lost to the Super Bowl champion. You right. know what I mean? Like right. he's still also too relatively very young in his career. His career has also progressed. He's not just the runner that everyone always used to, you know, try to say is. They also said he was a system QB. He only could play in a uh, Greg uh Roman uh power O offense and now he went to a spread and was still even more dynamic and even more mm -hmm. and he still gets all the negativity that comes with that. You know what I mean? So it's like regardless of whatever success that he gets um, you know, it's still, and then also too, not to switch it up, but LeBron James. You know I mean like LeBron James hit a game-winning shot to help save America, and people were like, oh, against against Sudan, against Sudan. It's like, well, damn, hey, James, like James. he hit a game yeah. winner. Like, Yo, it's, it's like what, what can he Yo, do please. wrong? No, look, talk, on, talk. On, I would say, yeah, you can talk <laughs> talk football first, but please, we can get to LeBron James next. All I'm saying to you is that I hear what you're saying. I'm I'm not saying that you're wrong in terms of like what I'm going to say hate that Patrick Mahomes receives or doesn't receive. All I'm saying to you is that I, if we're, if you're asking me to have a conversation about him and Lamar Jackson being a little different, I think that Lamar is weighs a little more because he's not as personable as Patrick Mahomes. Personable is. to who? Personable to any, to, to public urban media and reg, like media that's just being on our TV, on ESPN or, or where, wherever you, wherever. To Tim's point, I do think that it's some truth to that. I mean, just being real, like we all know in the media, if you want to be face of the league, if you want to be front and center, you got to be palatable to every audience. And a lot of that is white people, to be honest. And so I do You said it, not that, me. I mean, hey, <laughs> you know I'm going to always keep it real, but I mean, that's just that's a part fact. of it. That's a big part that's of it. That's a fact. And so yes. when it comes to Lamar, it, it could be, and I'm not even saying this is right, because I think it's wrong in a lot of instances, but... You know, they equate like intelligence or class to, oh, he he speaks with slang or he has braids or, you know, he, he got a big wolf a chain. Agent. He had his own agent, you know, or he had his own <laughs> representation and things like that. So, yeah, it, it is part of that. But at the same time, and I know uh, Edwin James talked about this a lot, you know, when he was with the Colts and just listening to other people that covered him when he was here. Um, Mike Chappell mm -hmm. being one of them who's been there forever. He was like, you, you shut up about winning. Like, you shut him mm -hmm. up by winning. And, and when you win, mm -hmm. it's like, what can you say after you win? And since he hasn't won at the highest level, that's when people use against you. It's like, oh, well, he's so good, but he doesn't win the big one. It's like, but y'all don't get the same hate to other people. And, and it, obviously, it's layers to that. It's not just about race and things like that, Football, but it is a big part sure. of it. And, like, how your overall image is received. Like, that's why LeBron mm -hmm. is, like, the face of the league versus other players in the NBA. It's like, when you say and do the right things and when you are at least acceptable to a reasonable amount of people – you always going to get a little bit more um, just as far as endorsements, opportunity. Um, engagement, yeah, yeah. opportunity, all those things. But um, Lamar's is a real one, I think, because, I mean, he ain't never changed. And so I think there's a big part of you that has to change. You get in the spot that you in, Zaire, and others. Like, you can't always be, like, you know, exactly where you come from. And I right, think you understand right, what I'm right, saying. Right. But yeah, at the yeah. same time, it's like you also can't, like, change who you are. And, you know, otherwise you was never really who you are to begin with. Mm, true. Mm. That you know what? That's a great point. 
Um, definitely talking about the growth and all that too, man. Yeah. Hey, James, man, I ain't gonna lie, you've been a great guest. Definitely appreciate you coming on. Um, you know, we definitely gotta, you gotta get this going. I like that. We, like I said, we got some kinks to work through, <laughs> but it's been great. Before we leave, I have one more question to ask you. Have you listened to Eminem's new album? Not a chance. Okay, all right. That's all I wanted to know. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Hey, man. Hey, look. That is James Boyd, uh, leader writer for The Athletic. I appreciate you, brother. I'll see you Wednesday in hey. the mosh pit. I'm going to have some, uh, something more until, you know what I mean? Look, I'm, I'm, I'm in a little purple thing. That's just a little uh, heads up for you. You know okay, what I'm saying? Okay. No, nah, Jada. Jada, I'm telling everybody about it, Jada. Jada over here hating. No, it's oh, not a secret. Man. Okay, oh, there you go. It's okay. Hey, you hear, right? You hear, right? Appreciate <laughs> it, James, man. Thank you, All bro. Right, Appreciate it, man. Easy, man. Yes, sir.